from Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's time for the Gospel Mailbox with Donnie Bryson. If you would like to contact the ministry, you may call Donnie at 423-355-3859. Write Donnie at P.O. Box 2446, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37409. Or email him at this email address, preacher at gospelmailbox.org. And now for today's lesson, here's Donnie Bryson. Good afternoon to you, and want to welcome you to another edition of our virtual Sunday School class. I'm, of course, Donnie Bryson, and today's Sunday School class, we've moved out of the um, Old Testament, and we've moved into the New Testament, and today's lesson is on faith. Now, this is a story of the healing of the boy with the evil spirit. And this event takes place uh, after, right after the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, it takes place after Peter had made the great proclamation of Thou art the Christ. Uh, it is a unique kind of story in, in the New Testament. Now, let me just go ahead and read it. This is taken from uh, the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, starting with the 14th verse. And when they came to the other disciples, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law. Because remember, they had just came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And when they came to the disciples who were not there, you know, there were three of them in the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. And when they came to the other nine disciples, there was a crowd gathered around. Uh, but anyhow, continuing on, uh, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he said. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that was robbed that has robbed him of his speech whenever it seizes him it throws him into the ground he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid and i asked your disciples to drive out the spirit and they could not oh unbelieving generation jesus replied how long will i stay with you how long will i put up with you Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Now notice how that is worded. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, Everything is possible to him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out. 
of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why shouldn't why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, This kind can come out only by prayer. Now we want to or I want to really make sure I underscore a couple of things. You know, and, and this may be a short a shorter lesson than normal. Um but I do want to make sure that I underscore a couple of very important aspects to this story, about this story, for us to all consider. Now, the first thing that I want to make sure that I say, and I say it very plainly to everyone, and that is, there are two things you have to balance in the ministry, at your church, in your evangelistic ministry, your ministry and your family, or whatever. There are two things you have to balance. First off, the devil hates our guts. He sends the demons of hell to destroy, to kill, to make us sick, to do all the damage that he could, any damage he can possibly do to us, both mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, however he could do. The, de the devil hates our guts. He is the destroyer. He is the enemy. Okay? Now, that's one thing. So, a lot of times when things crop up, it is demonic activity that is coming after you. They are physical elements. You can be attacked by physical, emotional uh, elements in your life that is a demonic attack. And that is a real thing. You either got to take what that book says and believe it, or you, or, or you can reject it. And if you take that story at face value and take it seriously, you have to admit that they are some instances where the devil has attacked attacks people and he places upon them physical ailments. Physical conditions, things that are visible in the, in the physical, tangible world, the devil does do that. He does do that. We see in this story, this young man, he was having seizures that looked a lot like epilepsy. He could not speak. He was... Uh, could not hear. He was being both both deaf and mute, both deaf and mute, from this demonic this demon that was attacking him. And we see that real plain. The Bible's not. There's no wiggling. There's no euphemisms. There's no nothing. It is real plain in that story, that that is a demon that is triggered that. So on one hand, you've got to, you've got that on one hand. And the demon even has a suicidal aspect to it. It would try to kill that boy. And I believe that there are some demonic activity that gets in people's lives that that, that seizes them, that is inspiring them to commit suicide or in, and maybe even take members of their family with them. I believe that, that some of that is demonic activity. And we have to admit that by just by reading the book. 
And we should be in our ministries, we should be sensitive to that kind of thing. We should be sensitive to that kind of thing because there is a possibility that we will run across instances like that where we need to, by prayer and fasting, cast a demon out of somebody that is making them sick or making them mentally ill and, or, or whatever uh, that is actually destroying them. It, they are instances where that is a demon, an actual entity, an actual living a creature of hell that has attacked, that has attacked somebody. And we need to, with prayer and fasting, go to cast that demon out. Now, they are also, and please, especially my fellow Pentecostals, because we would be more apt to do stupid stuff like this more than maybe other people. Please seek the voice of God before you go to do anything like this. And let me just, especially if it is a, if you think somebody is under demonic oppression or under demonic control, or they've got a demon that is taken over their life, and you go to try to cast that demon out, if they truly don't have a demon, and it is just the fact that they are sick, let's say somebody's, uh, they got a brain tumor. Let's say a physical brain tumor. And it is affecting their cognitive abilities. Let's say that they've got Alzheimer's, which is a physical, physical thing. And you go to try to cast that, that demon out of them. You can do a huge amount of damage. It's like everything else. It is like everything else in our ministries. Everything else in our churches everything else in our lives. Everything works out well if you hear the voice of God and you follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Everything works out well. But if you jump up and get at the wrong time and do the wrong thing, you could do a lot of damage. And I am just being as honest as I possibly can be, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking straight from my heart. From just an old guy. You could just, you know, somebody that's been in this, in this for a lot of years, and I've seen a lot of stuff. And I've seen people do some really good work for God, and I've seen things that have happened before that you just kind of shake your head and, and scratch your hair because it's just, you don't know what to say. Yeah, it, just people can do some really stupid things and do a lot a lot of damage. And God did not call us to hurt people. It, it's just that simple. We are called, that ministering is helping people. Now, sure, they are times, and I'll be the first one. In fact, my wife says I'm, I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably a little too quick to do it. But, but if it's, if it's therapeutic, I will hurt your feelings in a heartbeat. If, if if I feel like I've got the leading of God and God wants me to say something to somebody, I don't beat around the bush. I mean, I just look you straight. Nah, I tell you what I think God wants me to tell you. And if it hurts your feelings, tough. You know, it's, you know, I, it's just the way it is. I, you know, I kind of, uh, I'm kind of an Elijah kind of preacher. <laughs> I just, you know, there's no, you can't beat around the bush about some things. I mean, you, you know, if somebody needs something said to them, you just say it and you just go on, you know, because I'll tell you, God will hold, God holds us all. That doesn't, just because you got ministerial credentials don't mean God uh, uh, doesn't mean that, that, that you're being watched closer. Okay. Uh, it's for all of us. All of us. I don't care if, you know, your parents, you're an uncle, you're an aunt, you're uh, 
Sunday school teacher, you're the guy sitting in the pew next to somebody. God calls all of us to help each other. And sometimes helping uh, is uncomfortable. Uh, and that's just the way it is. But it's to be helpful to each other. Uh, what God does not call us to do ever is to say things to make us look big. God did not call us into the ministry. Go there, go ye therefore, and make yourself look like a big shot. That that's not what He calls us in the ministry for. Calling Pete, call, He calls us in our work and our ministry to win the lost and comfort and strengthen and encourage the Christian church. That's that's what we're called to do. It is a very positive thing, and it's not anything to to make us make our lives easier. Uh, so when you see in this story how that Jesus was so blunt and plain with everybody, was it because he didn't like them? It wasn't because he was trying to look big. They need to be told this stuff. They needed to be told this stuff. They had just been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He took his inner circle with him. It was Peter, James, and John. And he took them on special trips sometimes. And that was this is one of them where he took them up to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw... Uh, um, they saw that miraculous event, and he left the other nine down there. The other nine had this kid, this guy brought his kid to him that was sick. This guy had suffered, and a lot of us have, have, have went through that with our children. You know, um, seems like you've done everything you know to do. You've taken them to doctors. You've, you've, you've done everything you know to do. And it seems like nothing seems to do any good. You know, it may be a physical ailment. It could be a lot of different things. You know, and people go through a lot of stuff. A lot of times they'll go through stuff and you'll never know it. Because uh, they don't go around talking about it all the time. But, but you know, you can, you know, a person sitting next to you in the pew, they, they could be just like this guy. That it could have been that they have been going through something for years, for years, with a child, or maybe several of the children. Um, and they could have been going through trauma and trial and travail, and they have went around and done about everything. And they one day may share with you that they are going through that with their child. And your children can, can break your heart. I, if anything, you know, I mean, I love and care about a lot of people. But, you know, your children and your grandchildren, are they have a special place in your heart. It's just that simple. And if they are hurting, uh, if they're hurting, you know, it, it, it's it's the worst feeling in the world. Um uh, I know that one of the most difficult times, you know, I did the martial arts for a lot of years, taught Taekwondo for the Chattanooga City Parks Department for about five years. Done a lot of wrestling around and playing around and sparring and all that other kind of good stuff. But the hardest thing I've ever, the hardest time I've ever held anybody down was holding down my middle daughter while they sold her arm up. That was horrible. That was worse than trying to hold down some big old 300-pound man that was a lot stronger than me. That was horrible. You know, because like I said, your children can break your heart. You know, when you see them hurt, it will absolutely break your heart. My oldest kid, when uh, she got that blood clot and hurt that deep vein thrombosis in her leg, and I looked down there, and I knew that with those blood clots, 
you know, they they break loose a certain way, you're gone. You know, it's like a it's death sentence. And I looked down at her. That was the most hurtful, one of the most hurtful thing, moments of my life to do that. You know, because she's my baby. I mean, she was about, I think, 19 at the time. And when I looked down inside, and when I looked down, when I looked down to her, I seen that little four and a half pound baby that uh, that her mother delivered. You know, and and your children, they, you know, you will, uh, they got a special place in your heart. And it's like I've told this preaching before. If you want a good definition of dad, dad is the guy who will break into the sewer and climb through a mile and a half of sewer to grab you by the hair of the head and pull you out of it. Of course, he'll gripe at you the whole time he's bringing you back getting you out of it. But he's the guy who, that's what dad is, you know. And that's what this man was doing. He, he, he was doing everything he possibly could, everything he possibly could to take care of that boy. And he, he, he took his kid, didn't care what people said, didn't care if they made fun of him, didn't care about anything. All he wanted to do is get some help for his kid. And he comes up to this rabbi's disciples. There's nine of them there, and he presents his child to them. Could you please help me? Please help me. Please. Could somebody please help get my son and help him? So, there they were. They tried. You know, they tried. They tried to cast that demon out. Didn't work. The man's disgusted. He is disappointed. He is terrified. He's tried this one other thing that has failed. One other thing that's failed. And here comes these four men off of that mountain. There's James, John, Peter, and Jesus. Last ditch attempt. If there's any way, if you can do anything that you can do to help my son, would you please, please do it? You're my last attempt. I have tried doctors. I've tried your disciples. I've tried everything, and I cannot get any help for my son. Can you please help my son? And Jesus told him, all things are possible to him that please. Yes, I can. And if we carry anything from this story, I want us all to remember that. All things are possible to him that believes. You can try your buddy. You can talk to your pastor. You can call the district office. You can vote for whoever you want to vote for in a presidential election. But let me tell you something. When you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you take your problems to that one that walked down from that Mount of Transfiguration with his three disciples. And you put your trust and your confidence in him and put it in him alone. That's one of the cool things about that Mount of Transfiguration. When it was all over with, his three disciples, when it all, when the smoke cleared and the, and, the, and the light cleared, they saw Jesus only on that Mount of Transfiguration. You cannot put your faith or trust into anything or anybody except 
Jesus. That's who you got to get a hold of. And when that man finally got a hold of Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. His boy got help. His boy got help. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time for us to be together, Lord. Pray your blessings upon everybody who's listening on the radio or watching on YouTube, however they're getting this. Lord, I love them. I know you love them. I know that each one of us have situations that we are fighting and working our way through, and we got problems, we got things we're concerned about. And Lord, I know that you got the answer. You got the answer for what's going on in this country. You got the answer for what's going on in our churches, what's going on in our in our cities, what's going on in our streets, what's going on in our homes, what's going in our, on in our kinfolks' houses. Lord, you got the answer for it all, Lord, and I want to just turn everything over to you. Lord, and I want you to build within us the kind of spirit where we're turning everything over to you. And have your will in everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You have been listening to The Gospel Mailbox with Donnie Bryson. If you would like to contact the ministry, you may call Donnie at 423-355-3859. Write Donnie at P.O. Box 2446, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37409. Or email him at this email address, preacher at thegospelmailbox.org. 